Five weeks after my last visit with my daughter Kim and my lover Mark, I was still euphoric from that encounter. Mark and I called each other every other day and had phone sex several times. Unfortunately, I couldn't visit our daughter during that time due to their busy studies. But we have already planned a longer weekend Thursday through Sunday in the next two, three weeks. On Monday, my daughter called and said that her next semester must be paid within the next week or she would have to leave college. I said I would talk to her dad. When my husband got home late that night, I asked him why our daughter's college money hadn't been paid yet. He looked me in the eye for a few seconds and told me that he would not pay for a disrespectful daughter who was stabbing him in the back. Stunned, I asked him what he meant. He simply said that he had learned that his daughter disrespected her father and, perhaps even more, disliked him. That's why he decided not to pay for her tuition. But I could pay for her from my account. Since it was late evening, I decided to call my daughter the next day. But when I tried to talk to my husband about it, he said he had said all that needed to be said. I went to bed angry with him. The next day I called my daughter and told her what her father had told me. She had no idea why her father thought she didn't love him anymore. She said she had always loved him, but I could hear the sadness in her voice. I told her I would take care of the money for school, but she should talk to her father. When I went online to our accounts, I found that most of the money in the accounts was gone. I couldn't find out where the money went. I started getting angry with my husband again and waited for him to come home. As soon as he walked in, I asked him where all our money was and how I was supposed to pay for our daughter. Well, he said, I have withdrawn my money. The money that is in the joint accounts is for the current payments on the house and your car. If you don't have enough, get a job. As for paying for our daughter's schooling, maybe one of your lovers can pay for that. Although I don't think your college lovers will have enough money. Maybe you can charge them for your fornication, or your regular lover will give you money. My legs gave out from shock and I had to sit up. What? What do you mean? I don't have any lovers, I said as convincingly as I could. I felt like I was tearing myself apart and I didn't know what else to say. I didn't realize he knew about my extramarital sex at all. My husband was starting to get angry. Oh, come on, I know about your steady lover. I also know about your college lover, Mark, and I know about all the college boys you slept with with the support of my ungrateful daughter. I also know that you and she shared her boyfriend. I cried because I saw my marriage fail. I'm sorry, it was just sex, I whispered between sobs. Just sex. Then tell me. When was the last time you had sex with me and when did we make love? I couldn't truthfully answer that question, he continued. The last time you had sex with me was a week after your first visit to college, and it was just a pathetic sight as you lay there with your eyes closed while I did all the work. Yeah, you finished a lot, but during your third finish you yelled out the name Mark. That's when I realized something was terribly wrong in our marriage. And as for making love, it was so long ago, even I don't remember. I realize you didn't have time or need for me between all that phone sex with Mark and your constant lover. Yes, I have it all on video and audio, even your college threesome. I just sat there like a deer in headlights. I didn't realize that I had neglected my husband and marriage for so long. I looked into his eyes and saw how hurt he was. What a terrible wife I had been. Not that I have any interest in having sex with you after your threesome. Who knows what diseases you have now? And our daughter even encouraged you to give a shit about our marriage. She hasn't spoken to me once since she moved into the dorm. She even ignored my texts a few weeks ago. Now you know why I won't pay her tuition. She needs to get a job. Maybe she can prostitute herself like mom. Maybe together you can earn enough to pay for college. He said it with pain and anger. I just sat there and cried. Now I'm going to get some sleep. Over the last couple days, I've moved most of my stuff into the guest room. I'm not surprised you haven't even noticed. I will sleep there as I see no need to pretend. I sat there for a long time, or at least it seemed like a long time to me. Then I called my daughter, even though it was late, but I needed someone to talk to, and I had to tell her about our problems. Without any greeting, I just cried on the phone. Kim, your father knows. Your father knows about Mark, about all the sex that was there. He even knows about my lover here, and he knows about your involvement. 
which is why he won't pay your tuition. Oh, shit, Mom, how does he know? Do you have a lover at home, too? Shit, what about Mark? What's gonna happen now? And who's gonna pay for college? We hurt him. We've both hurt him very badly, and I don't know if our marriage will survive. He has said hurtful things about both of us, and honestly, I can't blame him. I don't know where he hid most of our money, but there is no way I can talk to him about it now. I have to let him cool down and stay obedient. Maybe I can save our marriage, but I wouldn't bet on it at this point. I'm not sure you should call him right now. He told me that you've been neglecting him since you moved into the dorm and even ignoring his messages. So please stay calm. Oh, and tell Mark not to call me. I can't see him or any of the other guys anymore. And I don't think your boyfriend Bob will ever be welcome here. My life is falling apart. There's no other word for it. I had it all. A loving husband who provided for both my daughter and me in every way. He made enough money that I didn't have to go back to work after our daughter Kim was born. We weren't rich, but we had a comfortable life with a nice home and I didn't have to worry about money. Okay, sometimes I had to argue with my husband, but most of the time I got my way. We had a varied sex life, but it had dwindled in the last few years because my husband had gotten promoted several times and had to work late more often. Maybe that was the reason I was vulnerable to the advances of my longtime lover, Billy. With my high libido, I thought I could have a lover without hurting my husband. I thought I could have my cake and eat it, and my husband wouldn't suffer for it. It would even improve my personal life with him. How silly that sounds now. Then came the time when our daughter moved away to college, and I visited her there for two weekends. The first weekend I met Mark at a fraternity party I attended with my daughter. I spent time in bed with him, and my daughter even appreciated it. What followed was four weeks of phone sex with Mark. During this time, I also met up with Billy, but I didn't tell him about Mark or my weekend. What I didn't realize was that I was completely neglecting my husband. On my second visit to college, I met Mark again and had sex with him and about a dozen of his friends throughout the weekend. My daughter knew everything and was happy for me, and we both didn't think much of my husband, her father. We were infinitely selfish. Another five weeks after my second weekend away, my life fell apart. My husband stopped paying for college and told me he knew about my lover, but my downfall didn't end there. I spent the rest of the week in a fog. I called my daughter several times and we cried together. I can honestly say that I never wanted to hurt my husband. I just didn't think about what would happen if my husband found out. Today I realized that I was living in my own fantasy world where I could have everything. My daughter said she was coming home for the weekend and we should sit down and talk to him. I wasn't sure if it would help me, but maybe it could repair her relationship with her father. Mark called once after that, but I disconnected him. Even Billy, who I saw usually twice a week, didn't cross my mind. He texted me a few times asking to come over, but I told him once that I had issues to work out and I would contact him later. My husband was not showing up at home in the evenings. At first I thought he was having sex with other women, but then I saw sports clothes in the hamper. I remembered that I had seen it before, but I didn't think about it then. Well, that shows where my mind was. Then came the weekend. Kim came over Friday afternoon and we talked. I even told her about Billy, the one secret I had kept from her. When my husband arrived late that night, my daughter ran up to him, hugged him, and yelled several times, I'm sorry. He just patted her on the back and said, we'll talk in the morning, and went to the guest room. I know this indifference hurt her, but she said she understood. After a sleepless night, we met in the morning at our dining room table. After looking at my daughter and I for a few seconds, he simply said, who wants to start talking? What do you both have to say about this mess? My daughter and I had discussed it the night before and thought it would be best if she mediated, despite her role in it. Dad, first I want to say that I'm sorry we hurt you so badly. We both, Mom and I, truly love you, and that has never changed. We know that our actions show something different. My husband only grumbled but didn't say anything, so my daughter continued. You know that I was always my mother's best friend, not just a child. She shared a lot of her life with me, so I also know a lot about your marriage. Yes, we even talked about sex and your sex life. At these words, my husband looked at me surprised and angry. I couldn't look him in the eyes for long, so I lowered my gaze to my hands. 
I remembered what I had told my daughter over the past few years, and it didn't paint a good picture of my life with my husband. Worse than it was. My daughter continued. My mother told me that over the years your sex life suffered. You started working longer hours and were often tired. I know that she started using toys to fulfill her sexual needs because she didn't want to pressure you. I didn't know that she had an affair with Billy a few years ago. She told me last week that she started exploring her sexuality with him to improve your sex life together. Until then, she spoke in a normal voice, but looked at me accusingly. But looking back, I never saw any improvement, at least not that she told me. She always told me that she was sexually unsatisfied and didn't get attention from you. That was the main reason I agreed to her affair with Mark on her first visit. I thought it would fulfill her needs in the long run and not hurt you in any way. I knew she had been in contact with him over the following weeks, and I even knew she wanted to meet him again. However, I did not know how intense their calls and conversations were. I found out after talking to Mark. Yes, I talked her into meeting him again the second weekend she came to college. It wasn't meant to be a long-term affair. I knew she'd had sex with more than just Mark, though I didn't know about the threesome the first night. But after that, I just figured it wouldn't hurt anyone if she let her hair down all weekend. At those words, she lowered her eyes and blushed, but continued. Yeah, I let her fuck my boyfriend, Bob. Somehow it seemed normal for the bond between my mother and me. After she finished, we sat in silence and pondered what she had said. I began to cry and realized that it would take a miracle to save the marriage. After a long pause, my husband turned to me and coldly asked if I had anything to add by way of explanation. I couldn't speak, so I just shook my head negatively. He waited a few more seconds to see if I would change my mind. Then he leaned back and determined my future. Let's summarize. My wife had her long-term affair because I had to work long hours to feed my family. She didn't want to talk to me about it because she didn't want to hurt me. Instead, she slept with other men thinking it wouldn't hurt me. She wanted to explore her sexuality by having an affair with Mark instead of talking to me. She also became a slut for over a dozen frat boys to fulfill her sexual needs with the support of my daughter. She even slept with her daughter's boyfriend to get closer to her. When he put it like that, it sounded really awful. I shamefully leaned back in my chair and let the tears flow, but I didn't think for a second that they would have any effect on him. After a while, he spoke again, addressing his daughter. Let's get something straight. Your mother had a good job before she got pregnant with you. Don't get me wrong, the pregnancy was planned, and I always wanted children. That's the reason we moved to this bigger house for all the kids we planned, even when I argued that this house was too big. But she countered that she would go back to work after the planned children went to school and contribute to the household. I sat there in tears and remembered that time. A time when we were happy. It's true. I wanted that big house and to fill it with kids, and I really wanted to go back to work. After you were born, she stayed home and took care of you. After a few years, I wanted more children, but your mother decided that one was enough and that she didn't want any more. I never forced her to have more because I thought it was her decision in the end. When you went to school, she also decided that she didn't want to go back to work and would focus on you growing up. It was okay at first because I was making enough to live a good life. There was just a little problem. Now we had a big house that I had to pay for and your mother didn't go back to work. In itself, that wouldn't have been such a problem because I was doing well at my job and making good money. However, since your mother stayed home, she had to fill her free time, especially after you went to school. Oh boy, I knew where this was going. I never realized how bad it was. Her hobbies eventually cost a lot of money. I don't want to explain what your mother spent our money on. I don't want to repeat her bi-weekly beauty salon visits for a few hundred dollars or her shoes, purses, and dresses that she used maybe once over the years. And I don't want to mention her new car that she had to replace every three or four years, with all the extras, of course. Oh, you know she even spent some of the money I earned on her lover? While I got for Christmas, a gift certificate, her lover got an expensive watch, with personalized engraving. At these words, my daughter looked at me in surprise. This was also something I hadn't told her about. It made me feel even more embarrassed. You may wonder why I didn't say anything. 
In fact, I had said something from the beginning. I had several conversations about money with your mother, but I kept them away from you. She always promised to cut back on her spending. Well, that would last a few weeks, and then she would start spending again. After a few years, I stopped discussing it, but I had to work longer hours to finance your mother. And of course, you. I don't need to tell you what hobbies you've tried over the years, and I'm sure you have no idea how much they cost. Your mother always wanted the best of the best for you. Over the past few years, 70% of our money went to you and your mother. With the remaining 30%, I paid my expenses and maintained our nest. Your mother once accused me of spending $150 on a tennis racket while she spent $400 on a new bag in the same week. And I'd really like to see your mom in all the lingerie she bought from Victoria's Secret or Agent Provocateur. But I guess that's reserved for lovers. My God, I thought, how much he knows. I've never seen it this bad. I never knew our financial situation. The money was just there to be spent. When I bought sexy lingerie, I seemed to think of my husband. But I never wore it for him, even when he asked me to. He interrupted my train of thought by continuing. So, my dear daughter, you will realize that money doesn't grow on trees. I had to work for it, and I had to work long hours to bring in extra money. I like my job, so it wasn't a big problem for me. Of course, my working long hours had to affect our sex life. After working ten or more hours a day, I don't have the energy to fondle your mom for a long time before getting down to the main part. She has always needed me to seduce her with caresses and fondle her body for long periods of time. Don't get me wrong, I love foreplay, but I don't always have the energy for it. Hearing about our sex life, my daughter started to blush. She wasn't ready to talk about sex with her father, even though she had started it herself. Oh, come on, my dear daughter, there's no reason to blush. If you talked to your mother about our sex life, you must have known all this. Did your mother tell you that at the beginning of our marriage we had quite an active sex life? We did it often and sometimes several times a day. That, of course, diminished after you were born, which was fine with me. But what your mother was never, at least with me, was really adventurous. Hearing it from him this way, I wanted to object, but I couldn't. Everything he said was true. He tried to be more adventurous and try new things, but I refused. I didn't want to be thought of as a slut. What a joke that is now. How my lover or the frat boys saw me, I didn't care, so I was willing to do things I wouldn't do with my husband. So, my dear daughter, blaming me for our poor sex life and using that as an excuse is not working. The last tirades got louder and louder, and I leaned back more and more. He took a few deep breaths and continued more calmly. I don't know what you both expect from me, but there will be changes in all of our lives. You can think about your future until tomorrow. Then I will decide what happens next. With these words, he looked at us for a few seconds that seemed like hours. Then he got up and left the room. Half an hour later, he came downstairs with a small gym bag and said he would be back late in the afternoon, and we didn't need to wait for him with dinner. Kim and I sat at the table, looking at each other, but immersed in our own thoughts. I had always considered myself a person of high morals and a high sense of family, but coming face to face with the truth, I suddenly saw myself for who I really was, a selfish, cheating bitch. Self-awareness is the first step to self-improvement, but damn, it hurt. But what hurt the most was that I had hurt my husband. Somehow I didn't feel sorry for myself, not one bit. But I did feel sorry for my husband and my daughter. How and especially when had I lost my morals? That was something I had to decide for myself, whether my marriage would last or not. I don't want to go into details, but as I talked to my daughter the rest of the day, I knew our relationship had gone badly awry. She didn't openly blame me, but I could tell from her wording and tone that she was blaming me for presenting her father as a bad person. She wanted a relationship with her father, and I thought she had a great chance. I would help her in any way I could. However, I didn't know if my marriage was mortally wounded or if it could be saved. I knew it would never be the same again, and I had to make many concessions. I knew I loved my husband, even though my actions didn't show it. And I knew I respected my heartfelt husband for all he had done for us. I never let anyone seriously berate him. I have to take the blame, take responsibility for my actions, and start giving without expecting anything. <laughs> the next Sunday morning began the same way it had the day before. 
My daughter and I were sitting at the table when my husband arrived. Before either of them could speak, I said, Please let me begin before I lose my courage. They both looked at me in surprise, and when they didn't object, I continued, My dear husband, I am sorry that I have caused you such pain. I don't know when I lost my way, but please believe me when I say that I have always loved you. Be assured that nothing you did or didn't do was the cause. The blame lies entirely on me. I don't know why I acted the way I did, but I intend to find out with professional help. I know you are not happy with our daughter right now, but please understand, she is as much a victim as you are. A victim of my selfishness and the lies I've told her, and lies in the form of my omission of important facts. With the last sentences, they looked at me with big eyes. I don't think they were expecting anything like that at all. Before losing my composure, I continued, Even if you don't want to see me anymore, please make peace with our daughter. She needs you as a responsible father to get her back on the right track. She needs you a lot more than she needs me, at least right now. I know I have no right to ask, but if you find it in your heart to give me a second chance, I'll do anything to earn it. I know you'll never forget what I did, but I hope you can forgive me sometime in the future. If you move on without me to be happy with someone else, you forgive me at least so that you can be happy. With that last sentence, I lost my composure and ran upstairs to my bedroom. I wasn't going to say that last phrase because I didn't want to think about life without him. But right at that moment, all I wanted was for him to be happy with whoever he was with. It took me 15 minutes to calm down, and I went downstairs. I'm sorry, I said as I sat down again. Everyone seemed to be deep in their own thoughts, but then my husband straightened up. I thank you for your confession. I didn't expect it to be so serious. After a few seconds, he continued. I don't want to beat around the bush. I've already consulted with a divorce lawyer. With that revelation, I leaned back in my chair. I knew my marriage was broken and all I had to do was wait to be served. I knew I wouldn't resist. I almost missed what he said next. Unfortunately, the laws in this state are not really in my favor in a divorce case. After considering all the possibilities with an attorney, we've come to the conclusion that it's cheaper to keep you here. I looked up with surprise and hope on my face. He looked me in the eye but there was certainly resentment in his eyes. But this was the first time I had a faint hope of saving my marriage. But I knew it was going to be a long road, and I was willing to take it. Of course, there will be some major changes. First, I've canceled all of your credit cards. You will both get debit cards that I will put a small but appropriate amount of money on each week. You should use this money to pay for groceries and some personal expenses. I know you need to make some serious adjustments to your spending, but this time, it will be up to me. Financial hardship didn't scare me as much, even though I knew I would have to adjust. I was used to having money when I wanted it. I'll have to get used to it. But the most important thing is your infidelity. You know you hurt me with your betrayal, and though you told me you never lost respect for me, I feel insulted. I hope you don't expect physical affection in the foreseeable future because, at the moment, touching you doesn't appeal to me. This hurt me very deeply. It was like a slap in the face. I had always wanted to look good, and it was important to me to know that men desired me. But now the man I truly loved didn't desire me, didn't even want to touch me, and it shocked me. But when I felt my face turn pale, I realized that it wasn't my body itself that made me unattractive. It was what I had done with my body. I had allowed other men to use it, even though only my husband should be allowed to use it. At this point, I felt dirty myself. Not only my body, my soul felt dirty too. I knew I had to cleanse my body and soul of deceit and selfishness. One more note. I expect you to get a clean bill of health. I know you've had unprotected sex with guys, and I don't want to take any chances. At those words, my face flushed red with shame. For all my lust, I didn't think about my health, much less the health of my loved ones. I would kill myself if I passed on a few STDs to my husband. This may be the hardest part for you, but I don't want to abstain from sex. 
We've had less in recent years and then just boring sex. We've already talked about the reasons why. However, you had a lot of adventurous sex with your lover, so now I have a hall pass for the future. I won't just sleep with any woman, but if I find someone worthwhile, I'll do it with her without regret. I won't flaunt it in front of you, and it won't be someone in our circle of friends, preferably some stranger. I'll keep it a secret, but I'll tell you if you want to know. Oh my God, he intends to cheat. Several feelings came over me. Anger, pain, hatred, humiliation. With that last feeling, I suddenly realized how he felt when he found out about my deception. It didn't make me feel any better, but I knew I had no right to complain. I just leaned back. Of course, if you want to continue this marriage, you must remain faithful. Otherwise, I'll divorce you. I can't take any more disrespect. Maybe I should have sex with your lover's girlfriends. But as far as I know, only three of them have steady girlfriends. He looked at Kim again. Bob has a girlfriend, but I'm not sure I want to have sex with my own daughter. Kim looked at him wide-eyed. And your longtime lover, Billy, well, he doesn't have a steady girlfriend, but he has two other married women he sees regularly. You're not his only woman. He's a player who likes to have married women and put horns on their husbands. There is at least one marriage that fell apart because of him about two years ago. This was something new. I didn't think much of Billy or what he did when I wasn't with him. There was no love on my part, only carnal lust. Those are the rules for the future. If you can't live with them, you'll have to file for divorce yourself. With these words, he stood up and left us sitting. A long silence followed as we pondered what we were facing. The only problem for me was the realization that my husband might be cheating on me. But what choice did I really have? I could be well compensated in the divorce, but at what cost? I love my husband, and I didn't want to lose him. I knew I had to make myself desirable to him, body and even more so soul. I had to win him back. The rest of Sunday, we hardly spoke at all. Kim left for her college on Sunday night. I didn't know what surprises the next few days would hold for me. On Monday night, an excited Kim called. She told me that Mark's fraternity had thrown a party that weekend. One of the girls there, who had been drinking heavily, had been raped by several guys. She reported the rape. That same day, someone called the police and reported a major drug distribution at that particular fraternity. A drug raid on the fraternity building found many drugs of all kinds, date rape drugs, and videos of various groups on the fraternity brothers' computers and cell phones. It was Mark's fraternity, and according to Kim, a lot of drugs were found in his room as well. I looked at my husband and saw the corners of his mouth lift up. I had a feeling that he knew about all of this before, maybe had set it all up. When I asked him, he simply told me that there was no way he would have organized the rape of an innocent girl. It was just a coincidence and icing on the cake. The college has shut down this fraternity, and its members will face hard times. Their future careers are not looking so good. On Thursday, I received another unexpected call. A child prohibition was found on Billy's office computer, and further investigation revealed several videos of him with various married women. There were none of my videos, but since I was one of his frequent contacts, I was interviewed. My husband supported me during the investigation, and after a few days, I was acquitted. A few weeks later, Billy called me from detention. He asked me if my husband had planted the adult children's movie since all my videos were missing. I didn't even know they existed. He had gotten an anonymous letter that said, don't have married women. I didn't ask, but I knew my husband had a hand in it. I know he has a friend who is great at IT security. I just hoped this friend hadn't seen my videos. Since I knew he was getting revenge on my lovers, I was just waiting for the ax to fall on me. Epilogue. A year later. I am happy. I'm still married to my husband, and I love him more than ever. Of course, it's been a rough year. I immediately went to a counselor to understand myself. A full medical exam, yes, I also got a clean bill of health, revealed a hormonal imbalance that may have started a long time ago, apparently shortly after my pregnancy, and I began treatment. Psychologically, I was diagnosed with a mild form of shopping addiction. These things combined with a high libido and less time with my husband may have led to my cheating. I could cite this as an excuse, but deep down I knew that I was the one making the cheating decisions. 
I made sure my husband knew all of this, but I never presented it as an excuse, and I made sure my husband knew it too. A few weeks later, I found a job in my profession at a small startup. My boss is a woman, I don't want any misunderstandings with my husband, who was cheated on by her husband. I told her all about myself, and at first she was very strict with me, but she saw how I wanted to be a better woman, so gradually we became good friends. The work doesn't pay that much money, but it is satisfying. My husband told me that I can keep the money, but I contribute it to his account. I live on his debit, which he has increased over the last year, but I have never used it fully except when I bought him something as a gift. My daughter has rebuilt her relationship with her father, and they are closer than ever. All I want is for them to be happy. My own relationship with my husband took longer to get better. After just a few weeks, a friend mentioned that my husband had become quite the stud. He cut back on his work hours and started a fitness program. Within a few months, he became very fit. Over the summer, our daughter was visited by several of her college friends. They seemed to flirt with him more than necessary, and he enjoyed their attention. Was I really jealous? Of course, but surprisingly, more than that, I was proud that he was attractive to young women. Did he sleep with any of them? I don't know and don't want to know. After all, he had a hall pass. It was three months before he came back to our bedroom and another three months before we started having sex again. It was when I caught him off guard in the bathroom that he fought back. I wasn't angry, but I was horny. I told him that he didn't need to fight himself off. He can use my body any way he wants. That was the first night of intimacy. A few weeks after sex, we went out to dinner with friends one day. When we came back, we were both pretty drunk, and we made love for the first time. I cried and cuddled up to him and said thank you several times. With that, we became real husband and wife again. Our daughter felt it immediately when she visited us and was happy for us. A year later, we went out to dinner as a couple. After dinner, he told me he was canceling his own hall pass. If I wanted to know anything about what happened during that time, I had one last chance to ask and he would answer. After this evening, he will never say anything more about it. I thought about it for a minute and then just said, I don't want to know anything about the past. But I ask that in the future, everything that happens happens between us.